It's time to take command with former NFL tight end Logan Paulson and former Commander's Beat reporter Craig Hoffman. What's up? What's happening? Welcome in Take Command Podcast. I'm Craig Hoffman. He is Logan Paulson. And uh, crazy to think, Logan, it was just a week ago. I was in Detroit at this point. Uh, <laughs> Getting ready for day one of the NFL draft. Uh, and obviously, now we have a draft to look back on. As we wrap up our draft review, kind of, uh, amongst ourselves, I think our pal Trevor Sikama is going to join us next week for a big extensive draft review. Uh, so that'll be really fun. Of course, PFF's lead draft analyst. And then uh, we'll see where we go from there. But Logan, uh, we talked about the first three rounds worth of picks earlier in the week. Time to get to the late round picks, any notes that we have on the UDFAs, and then uh, kind of we're going to look at the rest of the league, winners and losers, uh, so to speak. I like the way that Mina puts it on her podcast. It's it's winners and, hmm, hmm yeah, what are they right, doing? Because it's right. too early to really know either way, but there's certainly, I think when you look at the process for some teams, <coughs> Atlanta, <coughs> uh, there's, there's certainly some uh, questions to be asked. But let's start off with, Jordan McGee, uh, the commander's fifth round pick, number 139, linebacker out of Temple. Uh, Logan, he likes to hit people. Uh, good interview with Jordan. Uh, if you missed it on the Chris Russell show on Wednesday, he also uh, talked to Brandon Coleman. Uh, he and Linnell did. So worth checking those out in the Chris Russell show podcast feed. Uh, but a guy who, you know, physical football player, uh, tested really well in terms of the athleticism. You know, we, we talked about how the commanders have the highest average raw athletic score of all of their draft picks of any team in the league. McGee, one of the guys that's pushing those averages up. What do you see when you watch him? Yeah, I think you see a guy, you know, he got the single digit at Temple. Um, he, you know, he's 6'3", 225. Uh, so a little undersized for a linebacker position, but I actually really like kind of what he brings. And what I mean by that is like, I think you mentioned the physical, the physical nature with which he plays with. And I think you see a guy who likes to tackle, a guy who's a physical tackler. I think he's a little bit lacking in terms of like block destruction techniques. And that could be a technical thing they're coaching at Temple. It could be that he's not always covered up. Uh, but I think that's something that you see an issue with. But the thing that gets me really excited about him is his ability to kind of operate in space. Like he's not a safety, but he kind of looks and feels and plays like that at times especially like when he's in the slot I you know he's kind of usually the middle of three what I would characterize as like a middle linebacker but occasionally he's lined up over slot guys he's covering tight ends and I think that coverage profile is something that gets me pretty stoked about him because I think when you look at like Jeremiah Trotter Jr. just as an example or um, you know uh, Tommy Eichenberg from Ohio State like I like those guys a lot I like their film a lot they're very instinctive but they don't cover at all. And I think when you're looking at NFL linebackers in 2023 and 2024, like they have to be able to cover. They have to be able to understand, diagnose play action, get into throwing windows. And I th I'm not sure his instincts are there yet, but I think you have a guy who at least has the athletic foundation to get there and has a feel for coverage that gets me excited in addition to the physical elements. So I... Um, I feel pretty good about the pick. I feel pretty good about his upside. You know, I think, um, obviously, uh, who's uh, Fred Warner in San Francisco is an interesting comp for him who kind of played the star, kind of a run and hit type of guy with some coverage upside. He's not that same coverage player that Fred Warner was, but it's kind of cut from the same cloth in terms of how I would characterize them. And they kind of look similar, you know, 6'3", 222, or 225, excuse me. I think if you were to gain about 10 pounds, work on some of his techniques, I think you probably feel pretty good about his upside moving forward. And I think in the immediate future, you feel really good about his special teams value. Um, and, and a guy that can learn from Bobby Wagner, a guy that can kind of carve out a role potentially moving forward in this defense. That's really interesting um, to hear that because now I'm like, you know, how, how formulaic is Adam Peters? Uh, and yeah. not necessarily in a bad way because the formula in San Francisco, uh, it's worked out quite well. But if you're telling me like, oh, he got his Kyle Juszczyk type, you know, if Ben Sennett is a little, has got a little, uh, you know, Kyle Juszczyk, a little George Kittle to him. Um, Jordan McGee's got a little Fred Warner to him. Like, are they hunting these same archetypes or is it just, you know, Adam has certain traits that he's looking for. And obviously it worked out in San Francisco that he found guys with those specific traits. And now you're seeing it again uh, here in DC in his first draft. So I think the thing about the linebackers, this is something that I've, I've been pushing in terms of like my own personal linebacker evaluation for a long time is because of how the position is changing, you need coverage players, right? You need guys that can work underneath coverages and read play actions. Like the running and hitting 
in terms of downhill tackling for the linebacker position is not <clears throat> is not quite as important in, in my estimation when I watch film as it was when I was playing, which was, you know, 15 years ago now. Like you needed to be a downhill aggressive towards the line of scrimmage player. Now it's like you got to operate in space. And so I do think that there's one of the reasons that the NFL is having a hard time with linebacker evaluation is because I don't think they've shifted totally from that traditional mold, right? They say, oh, look at this guy, you know, um, uh, Devin White. Look at him run downhill and attack the football and look at his 40. But you don't see the coverage instincts with him, right? It was the same thing with Patrick Queen for a while, right? He's a run and hit downhill guy, sideline to sideline, but you need to see the coverage backbone. And so that's why I think you see so many teams having so so much success, quite frankly, like Dallas is a really good example of this, of taking safeties, putting them at linebacker positions and having them cover and having those coverage instincts on the field. Because ultimately that's what you're looking for. You're looking for team speed, you're looking for coverage instincts and people that understand throwing windows, windows right? And, um, and I think that's what you get here with Jordan. So I don't know if it's an archetype necessarily, like Fred Warner is the example because he's the best at of the course. position. But I do think that there is a, um, like that is the direction I think linebacker eval is going. Like, so one of the things I do every year in my draft prep is I look at big safeties and I'm like, which one of these guys could play linebacker potentially? And the other thing you do is you look at small kind of star linebackers and say, which one of these guys could go the other way? Because that's the type of player you're really looking for. And I think Jordan McGee, when you watch the film, he's he, he kind of fits that mold really, really well. And, you know, like everyone talks about Junior Colson from Michigan, like didn't have to cover a lot. That's one thing I like about this pick a lot is he's – there are some issues to his game, no doubt. That's why he's a fifth round pick. But in terms of upside, in terms of space play, I think he's he's a guy that I really liked and valued in the process. And so I'm really happy he's here as a Washington commander because I do think his trajectory fits more with the direction the NFL is going at the position as opposed to you know some of these other guys who are more traditional linebacker uh, archetypes. Yeah, no, I think that's really interesting because if you hunt speed and you hunt coverage instincts like you're not necessarily looking for fred warner but you're going to find guys that have some things that remind you of fred warner that's the nature of it right you're not right. hunting the player you're hunting the traits and if you hunt the traits there's obvious similarities um it's interesting i just pulled up the beast um dane brugler's uh draft guide of course if you want to hear more about the beast check out our interview with dane from before the draft but dane does such a great job of getting like the backstory on all these guys so yeah. i will uh i will read from the beast uh for all three of these picks um and i will also say like the stories of the guys that the that adam picked here that the commanders picked here there's some incredible stories um i don't know how familiar you are with brandon coleman's background for no, instance not really. zero star recruit didn't play football until his junior year um and of of high school was a basketball player uh military kid grew up overseas uh, gets there in Texas, figures out how to play football in two years, enough to get a JUCO look, and then ultimately transfers into TCU. And by 2022, you know, five years after he starts playing football, he's starting at left tackle in the national championship game. Yeah. Um, so, like, you have stories like that, which I, I mentioned not just because it's a cool story, but it's something I'm going to say about McGee. Uh, and Luke McCaffrey, I think, fits into this as well. But McGee was a, a two-way guy in high school, played quarterback. Started mm -hmm. wide receiver, played quarterback, was actually like got major college interest. Indiana was interested in him as a quarterback, and he said, "No, I want to play defense." Like yeah. that's that's the mentality of this kid, and uh, you know he ultimately winds up you know at Temple and and playing defense and all that kind of stuff. But it's not like he like he has that quarterback offensive background where you look at McCaffrey again, quarterback until two years ago. Coleman still within his first 10 years of playing football when some of these kids have been playing football since they've been five years old. And to me, what that says is they've got so much more room to grow. Like yeah. they haven't dedicated full time to the thing they're going to be doing. And now they dedicate their self, themselves to it at a professional level. And we talk about players that have an upward trajectory. Jaden Daniels falls into this as well. Yeah. What, what direction is the arrow pointing? And it seems like Adam Peters, one of his things that he identifies as a thing he wants is your arrow is pointing up and there is room to go up. Yeah. Well, I think to your point, like you look at Mike Sanders still like switching positions, right? Yeah. In college, he's been playing DB. 
obviously played DB in high school, but he's been playing DB at a high level for two years. And then Ben Sanat was a zero star recruit coming out, you know, and like has made himself this, this, this great, this tremendous player. And I think when you look across the board, they're all like that. Those are their stories, right? It's guys that have earned every inch. Like I was listening to something. Oh, it was Daniel Jeremiah move the sticks. And he, he said he had some interview time with, um, with Adam Peters before the, the draft, then was kind of able to release some of the information now. And he's like, one of the things I love about Jane Daniels is he no, nowhere in the process was it easy for him. He had to earn everything to get to this moment. And I think that like you're alluding to is applicable to all of these guys to a certain extent, maybe not Johnny Newton, but you know, like, you know, no, no draft is perfect. I like good football players, not just their story. I'm drafting. Yeah. Oh, but, that guy didn't have to face enough adversity. He's just <laughs> awesome the way he is. Let's not take him like, right. No. Uh, but I do think like for, I know for sure, what is it? Four of the guys have had, uh, had kind of really, really earned their way and clawed their way up to something pretty impressive in terms of, of play. So I, I think, um, again, it, it kind of fits a mold, fits a vision. Um, and it, I think it informs something about their character too, which is, again, we've talked about that a lot. And when I'm building a team, I want guys of that ilk, guys that are going to get better. And I think like if there's one thing that I learned from my time in the NFL Talent it will only get you so far. The guys that are truly special are tremendous students and tremendous workers. And what this upward trajectory for these guys we're talking about shows me is that they understand that process. And that's a level of professionalism that I I want to bet on, right? You know, we talk about how most drafts don't hit. Like, uh, what is it? 50% hit rate is like amazing. But I think if you look at the history of drafts, those guys who have those qualities are guys you can bet on. And I, I think it's just great that the in this draft specifically, there's such a high composition of guys like that. Yeah, no doubt about it. 